you want to learn more about effective management, head over to madsingers.com and sign up for my free management training. Welcome to the Mad Singers Management Podcast from madsingers.com, where entrepreneurs and business managers learn and share. If you like the show, don't forget to leave a review. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Mad Singers Management Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Carrie Cardoso. Welcome to the show, Carrie. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited to talk with you today because you talk about some of the things I absolutely love talking about, which is people, strengths and weaknesses, and figuring out where people fit better within an organization and so on and so forth. And yeah, that's one of the things I spend a lot of time on as well. So I'm super, super excited to talk with you more about that today. But before we jump into it, there's people around the world who don't yet know who you are, believe it or not. So would you mind doing a quick introduction to who you are and how you ended up where you are? Yeah, I'd love to. So again, thank you for having me. Super excited about these topics. So I am a business psychic. And for a lot of people that you know can be uncomfortable or can scare them, but what I basically do is I have the ability to read energy around people and situations and businesses in itself. Everybody holds an energy. And I use these abilities that I have along with my background in management in order to help uh, companies to be more organized, more focused, more productive, being able to serve their clients or their industry at a higher level. Um, and I started doing this. I worked in corporate for many years. And back in 2014, um, I had a sudden life change. And I ended up leaving corporate and going off on my own. And I realized that I had these abilities that I'd had my entire life. And that with using them and really stepping into this, and it was just so much more fulfilling that I could help people in a different way. So I did management. I um, ran a $16 million company with uh, 60 people directly underneath me. And so I use those skills along with my energy reading in order to help other businesses right now. Excellent. Excellent. And I think, I mean, today in our world, uh, and particularly the way the world looks right now, like there's a ton of stress, there's a ton of fear and, and you know, being able to communicate effectively from a business standpoint through some of this stuff is, is critically, critically important. And uh, I think that's some of the, some of the things you focus a lot on as well. So any particular hints or tips or anything that you feel business owners or businesses in themselves can, can actually do to, to manage the situation better? Yeah, I think I agree with you. Right now, there's so much stress in the workplace. Things have shifted. Things are changing. Businesses are merging. Uh, you know, some businesses are going out of business. And I think that uh, managers and employers make a big mistake when they don't communicate what's going on to their employees. And sometimes they think that, and I get this because we did a lot of um, merging of corporations or buying places out. And we think that if we keep it quiet until we know all the details that it'll be better, it'll create less stress and you know less rumors. But for employees, it often feels like they're being blindsided. It often feels like they there's so much uncertainty and it builds so much more fear when it's not communicated what is going on and what their the intentions are. And I think that having an open stream of communication builds trust. It builds loyalty with inside the employees, and it helps to bring a sense of peace and calm. And it also, you know, keeps the gossip and the fear mongering to a minimal. And and that's really what we. We need. We need to create more trusting environments, especially if there's a merger or there's, you know, layoffs going on and in cutbacks to be able to create more dedicated and committed employees for that company. Yeah, totally agree with that. And, and here's the thing. A lot of time business owners are like, oh, people don't know what's going on. You know, I'll keep it quiet until we know all the details. And reality is a lot of the time people can very much feel something is going on. They maybe not know exactly what, but they can definitely feel uh, when things are going on. Right. Yeah. And it's uh, like a lot of the time, I think business owners are also a bit naive to think that they can just keep it from their employees. Right. Um, and and re reality is with all change. Right. Like you much rather want to be in the forefront. You much rather want to get people bought into the process, right? I, I, I have seen a couple of situations where it maybe didn't make sense to communicate that much, right? So I had a, a company that had a takeover bid on them and so on where 
you know, they were not really intending to, uh, they, they weren't eager on taking the offer and they weren't actually, they, they, they didn't believe it will actually go through, right? And therefore they didn't communicate. And I, I kind of understand that angle because, you know, it's different. If you are considering selling, I would definitely communicate something to people. Um, but but there is probably sort of gray area situations where it, it doesn't make as much sense, right? But but yeah. otherwise, totally agree. I mean, it, it's open communication and, and it's really the trust, right? Like a lot of the time, it's about showing employees that you can give them, you can communicate to them and trust them with that information. Not just trust us in not sharing it, but trust that that communication can actually help them make better decisions. Because in, in the end of the day, so many business owners are frustrated that people don't make good decisions. They're, they're frustrated that, oh, you know, why did people do that? Why did they do this thing instead of that thing? And the whole thing from, from my experience is that people make the best decisions they can with the information they have, right? Correct. If they're making bad decisions, it's typically because they don't have the information that will really benefit them to make those great decisions, right? And that is obviously, very often when the business owners are holding on to that information and not sharing effectively. Yeah, it's so true. And I also think that business owners are also looking for loyalty. And, and I understand when you're in the process of making a transition that you might not fill your employees in, but once that process is in the works, <clears throat> excuse me, and it's going through, if we want to create loyalty with inside the company, it has to go both ways. So if you want your employees to be loyal to you and to stand by you and make the best decisions, you have to be loyal to them. And in, you know, the respect has to go back and forth. And that's where that communication is huge is once that merger goes through, and all the due diligence is done and you know what you're going to do, keep your managers in the loop, keep your employees, keep your, your decision-making people in the loop so that they build that trust and loyalty moving forward and you have that equal respect back and forth. Yep, totally agree. And I have a, one concept that I use a lot is, is uh, I, I very much like identifying sort of the opinion makers and I, I like identifying people within my teams that where maybe individually, I like giving them a heads up before bigger changes start, particularly when it's people who are not good with change. Because, yes. you know, some people, you can bring them into a meeting and you can say, hey, you know, this is happening. And they're all like, okay, cool. That sounds great. Uh, but some people need time to mold change over and they need time to think about things. And if you actually give them a little bit of a head start, first of all, they, they feel more sort of special and they feel more uh, pride that you actually, again, trust them with the information, but there are often those people that can actually end up being a little bit troublesome if you don't share with them effectively, because people who, people who are naturally not great with change often, you know, they often start asking difficult questions in a difficult way and saying, no, that's not a possibility. And we can't do that. And, you know, they, they often come, they come across as very negative. That's not really the intention. The intention is to to get the best outcome, but they end up coming across as negative. And that's obviously not great when you're trying to implement change. You really want as much positivity around a change as you possibly can, right? So that, that's something that I found super, super important um, over, the, over my years in management, at least. Yeah, I agree. I, I, about two years ago, implemented a new um, project management system in my own company. And I did it on a whim and I did it really quickly. And I was just really focused on making these changes. And I didn't communicate with my head, uh, with my head assistant as to why we were doing that. And she got really upset with me because she thought that I wasn't happy with her work. She thought that I'm one of those people that I give you your task. And I think this is important for managers to learn how to do this. And then I know you're going to do it. I won't even check up on you. I, I don't care how you do it. I don't care when during your day you fit it in. As long as it's done by the time, I'm cool with that. But she felt that this project management system was to basically keep my hands on everything she did because the system actually would send an email, which I didn't know it was sending because I was the head and not an employee every day to ask what she did. 
And after a week and a half, she messaged me. She was finally like, are you not happy with my work? And I said to her, I'm not understanding. Why would you think that? She said, well, every day you ask me to list out what I did. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I've never asked that. And she said, and I didn't realize this system was sending that. So it can, we have to communicate with our employees. Otherwise, there's that trust breaks down. Uh, people get really resistant. They can get upset. And I had noticed that she had stepped back and wasn't as, you know, forthcoming or just freely in her speaking. And I had no idea why. So communication is so, so important. And change is huge in, in helping people to understand that you're changing for the betterment of the company. And getting people's opinion and feedback on, on things like that is really beneficial. Because for her, it was more of a, it felt like a punishment where for me, it was just to keep everything in an organized place. So that communication is huge. Okay. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I, I think, again, this communication is, it's a difficult thing, right? But what, what what's your ma sort of management process around communication? Like how, how frequently do you talk to your employees and do you have any kind of framework to use around it? Yeah. So um, on rule of thumb, how I do it when we're managing is I like to have um, morning meetings every meeting or every morning and depending on the team size, even if it's for five minutes or 10 minutes, check in, what is everybody doing? Where's the focus? Do you have questions? If not, you're free to go. Um, I like to do if you have, um, if you have different departments, once a week have a department meeting, and then once a month have an entire business meeting, have entire company meeting. This way, nothing falls through the cracks. This way, it gives people an opportunity to ask questions. A lot of us are busy. A lot of us have things that we're going in multiple directions. And oftentimes, if you're busy and not giving your attention to your team or to your employees, they feel as if they can't communicate with you. They feel as if you're, you don't give them time. Whereby giving them an opportunity to ask questions, to say, I'm here, I'm listening to you, you are my only focus, it creates a different relationship for people especially we have a lot of people working from home now and things can fall through the cracks or, you know, managers and business owners can feel as if people aren't as committed or they're not as dedicated or they're more distracted. So even having this five or 10 minute check-in, it puts everybody on the same page. It eases that feeling that you know, things are getting lost or things are getting missed or questions aren't being answered. And it allows for more flow within the day and, and more, you know, trust that everybody's doing what they're saying they're supposed to be doing doing yeah okay that makes a lot of sense that makes a lot of sense and uh yeah the big topic the big topic and, and what i'm super excited to talk about is really uh, around sort of strength and weaknesses and you know as i always say putting the right people in the right jobs is one of the most it's one of the most simple things when you learn how to assess it but it's one of those things that so many business owners get wrong right and the problem is when you put someone who doesn't have natural strength in an area where, yeah, where they're just not naturally good. Uh, the challenge is that, you know, you can ruin the best people on the planet uh, doing that, right? So yeah. definitely getting the right people in the right seat. So what, what's your process? How do you go around it? And like, what, what, what sort of you, if you start working with a company, for example, like how, how do you do it in practice? Yeah, so I I love doing this and I think it's really important. Um, like I said before, one of my gifts is to be able to read people and people have strengths and weaknesses that are often not displayed or not talked about. A lot of the times people can, um, people can hold back, people can be insecure about speaking up about what they want. And when we first read people, oftentimes, we misjudge them based on the words that they speak. So sometimes people are really good about talking about what they feel they're good at, but when you actually put them in a position, they really have no idea what they're doing or it's not where they should be. So when I first go into a company, I always talk to whether it's the business owner or the manager, um, the team lead, depending on the size of the company. We talk about where things feel like they're falling through the cracks, what's going on, but because of my ability to read energy, there's very little conversation or questions that I have to ask. It's more so I take a look at the overall company and I take a look at where people are, what they're doing and what their energy says about them. So there's people who are really great at organizing. There are people who are really great at communicating. 
There are people who are really great at leading. And just because somebody talks a lot or talks a good game, it doesn't mean they're a good leader. Just because somebody knows their skill and is that great at it, doesn't mean they know people and, and can encourage people and build them up. So being able to read the energy of people allows me to say, you know, the person that you're having managing is actually not working to your benefit. This person would be a great person to put in that position. Oftentimes I'll get feedback and say, let's say like, you know, John is managing, but Michael would be a much better management. I've had employee employers that will come to me and say, but Michael hardly says anything. He doesn't speak up. I said, because he's, he's in his role. John is the manager. So, so Michael's not doing that. Give him an opportunity to show you what he can do. And you're going to be greatly surprised at his ability to encourage people, his ability to, you know, bring a job in on time or, or make sure projects are done on time and be able to really build that team with inside of with inside of this aspect of your business. So this really allows people to to show what they're really great at. And what I have found is that we as humans are conditioned to believe that we're great at something that people tell us to. So along the same lines of you have parents that say you've got to go to college or, you know, you've got to be a lawyer. Your, your father was a lawyer. Your, your grandfather was a lawyer. We oftentimes do that as well. And we keep quiet to the things that we're really passionate about or the things that we would really like to do, but we don't believe we're supposed to do. Where when we give people the opportunity to to show us and to basically shine their light on what really drives them, it's going to change how they show up in your business. And, and really understanding what drives a person is going to help them to show up in a different way in the role that you put them in. Yeah, and I, I think that's super important. Right? I, I mean, one of, the, one of the biggest things I've always found is that even when you ask people, it's not that they're afraid of saying what they want to do. It's the fact that most people don't know themselves very well. So a lot of people, you know, they grow up, they're in a situation where they're like, oh, you know, what job do you want to be when you grow up? And they're like, oh, I want to be a, a firefighter or whatever. Like they, they, yeah. they put out some random stuff because they know someone that's in there or, you know, they, they know a little bit about it or whatever. But, but reality is most human beings, unfortunately, most human beings aren't spending much time in getting to know themselves better, right? And a lot of the time, like, so I, I've worked a lot with like personalities and personality tests and all that sort of stuff. And the one place they always fall down, well, there are two places they fall down. Number one is, it's not people are not being honest. It's just people don't know themselves well. So like some people you would say, you would ask like, you know, are you great at, you know, walking up to people and talking with them? And they're like, yeah, I'm awesome. But, but they're absolutely not, right? They might yeah. feel like they're awesome, but compared to an average person, they're, they're way below average, right? And, and that the same, if someone had been sitting staring at, you know, something like Excel for two weeks, um, and they're generally horrible with that kind of data and detail, if you ask them, like, are you great with spreadsheets? And they're like, yeah, I've been staring at it for two weeks. I'm awesome, right? And, and, but they don't actually understand themselves. And it, it's less of an issue I find with people actually not being honest with the exceptions of, when you are hiring people because in hiring situations people generally want the job and right. they will answer what they think you want to hear no matter what you tell them because a lot of yeah. time like I, i've seen a few of this myself right but a lot of time people are like yeah just answer whatever we just want to figure out what your personality is and so on but if you see a job spec that's like you know, we need someone super duper organized and there's a question to you saying you know are you an organized person it's kind of like uh, yes. <laughs> now I am. Yes, exactly. Am. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, but you're so right. People do not know themselves. They do not know themselves there. And, and for me, when I work with people, um, uh, most people are up in their head. They're in that logical aspect. They are, again, thinking about what they should be, how they should answer the question, how they're supposed to show up, what they're supposed to do. When, when I work with people, I teach them to connect deeply to their heart space. So when you're tapping into your heart space, when you're tapping into who you are, it's, you know, as a psychic, we, we know that the soul lies with inside the, the heart space. It is not in the head. And so when you're connecting to your soul, your soul will always lead you in the right direction, but we are so resistant to connecting with ourselves because it forces us to be vulnerable. 
It forces us to see things about ourselves that we might not want to admit. It forces us to look at things that we've been hiding um, for, from ourselves because it's uncomfortable. And so helping people to really connect with who they are and get honest with that will completely change the person. People come to me because they have no idea what they want to do when they grow up. And these people can be, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s, because they've never allowed themselves to truly dig into what they're passionate about and what they truly desire because everyone thinks they should do something that's going to make them a lot of money. I have to do something that I'm going to be successful at. I have to do something. And even I have kids, I have children who are in high school. I cannot tell you how many times that the, my kids will come home and say, the teacher said, if I don't go to college, I'll never make anything of myself. If I don't pick a, a career that's going to give me a lot of money, I'll never make money. Fortunately, my children know this is not true because of what I do and what I teach, but so many people don't. And, and we raise a society to think that if you don't do these certain steps that they teach you over and over and over again, you're never going to be successful. And so allowing people to connect to themselves and, and encouraging that allows people to really shine through with what they're great at. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I totally agree. I mean, I, I see it all the time. And, and it, unfortunately, it's often the worst people it can happen to because the, the, the thing is the people who are generally comfortable speaking up are uh, generally not you know they they're more likely to figure out what it is they're actually passionate about but it's mm -hmm. often the very kind very sweet people who are who are afraid to put themselves first uh, that they're, they're not afraid to put themselves first but basically they're, they're living in their sort of emotional side of the brain and they always put other right. people before they put themselves and right people that, pleasers that, Exactly. But it's not just pleasers, but it's the whole fact that they're trying to, that they're doing what people tell them. So it's like if their parents like, oh, you should get paid more, go ask your boss for a raise, then they'll go ask for a raise. But they, would, right. they wouldn't ever do it on their own accord. Right. Correct. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, the, the whole thing is, again, I think it comes, a lot of this comes back to happiness, right? And it's like people think you have to make a lot of money. People think you have to do all these things. But Here's the thing: a lot of people is happy the way they are, and right. I like. You, there's no point in pushing status quo just to push it, right? right? If there's something you want, you should definitely go after it. But just changing because society tells you to, or because you know your mom or your partner or someone else tells you to, that is never good, right? And and you want to learn to follow your own pressure and your own sort of willpower more than yeah. the willpower of people pushing you around right yeah. whoever you are right and and you're right i people so many people feel that if they make a certain amount of money they're going to be happy if they reach a certain level of you know accolades that it's going to fulfill but that's not how it is it i work with so many people who are looking for happiness and fulfillment and it does not come in money because they'll make you know, they'll uh, work with business owners who make, you know, 50, a hundred thousand dollars a month. And they're like, I'm still miserable. I'm still at that place. Like it feels the, the high is great, but the low is harder every time. And, and when you really allow somebody to tap into themselves, to understand what is it that's truly fulfilling them, that's when the change happens. That's when they feel that fulfillment with whatever it is that they're doing. And, and that's the thing is that so many people will come to me, even when I worked in corporate, it was so hard to see people who were, who would say things like, I hate my job. Like I'm going to work just to go to work because I need a paycheck because I can't wait for the weekend. And to me, that is so deflating. Like we spend so many hours doing what we do. Now I am not by any means, I teach people to follow their purpose and connect to their heart space and, and live the life that you love. And that doesn't mean that you have to wake up every single morning, like a cheerleader, super excited for your day. There are days that are hard. There are days that even I, where I'm doing the things that I love, I'm like, ugh, I just, you know, today's not the day. Today's not what I want to do. But if that's your every day, if that's your norm, then for one, you're not going to perform. For two, uh, I, I also believe that when we're out of alignment, we get sick um, because we're, the energy in our body is thrown off and you're, you're never going to reach that happiness. So helping people to truly understand what fulfills them and what allows them to reach that level of happiness and success that they're desiring is going to have them showing up in an entirely different way for your business. So that benefits you, but it's also going to change their life. So that's benefiting them. And I, I think also what's, what's fundamental is understand um, 
di different people are very different, right? And what that creates is um, certain people will have a very difficult time being very happy um, mm -hmm. because their expectation to themselves is always extreme, right? right? And what drives them and what pushes them, uh, take some famous people like Elon Musk, for example, right? Uh, he will only ever get as far as he is because he is not satisfied. And the only way you can create the amount of drive and the type of drive he have is quite often not being satisfied with what you have, right? And, and yeah. a lot of the time that also turn into some kind of unhappiness, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I am definitely not one of these people, but I, uh, I cannot remember the last time I woke up not being happy. Um, but 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 fundamentally, I've, I've worked with a lot of people that, you know, they need a certain amount of unhappiness in their life to really push themselves and, and to see that extra, like give that extra. And they they are typically the people who pushes themselves to the top because they're so good at challenging themselves and they're so good at putting themselves under pressure in a way that just makes them perform exceptionally well. Yeah. Yeah. And for the most part, you're right. There's, there's some people who might not ever reach that level of happiness, but what I've also found, uh, along with the psychic stuff, I do healing. And when you dig into what people are holding on to and you help them to see that and release that, it totally changes how people show up and it totally changes their, their energy with inside of them. And it releases this, there's things within our subconscious that we don't even know are affecting us. And when we can release that, and I'm not saying that would happen with everybody and Elon Musk, it might not ever happen to, but the average person and so many people can change how they show up on a daily basis and what they're feeling by releasing these things that we're holding within inside our subconscious and allowing ourselves to, to be more connected in, and to be recognizing what is pushing us forward and, and making that choice. So you can choose where you put your focus. You can choose what you align with. You can choose what you allow into your consciousness in order to make those changes. Yeah. And that, as an example, I mean, I'll, I'll use myself as an example, right? And I was definitely when I was younger, I was, I was struggling to uh, trying to push for all the things that people were telling me to push for. Right. right. But I, I found out uh, luckily very quickly, I started doing personal development even more already when I was like 18. Right. So I, I learned yeah. very quickly. Um, but I, I, I really, I, I really struggled to get motivated by money. And, and even to this day, money doesn't do a thing for me, right? right. Uh, what, what drives me and what pushes me is helping people. And again, the second I recognized that that was what was my key driver, but generally and in life, um, like that makes me understand how to push myself, right? So instead of saying, you know, if I do this thing, I'll make 10 grand or whatever, you know, right. if I can say, you know, if I do this thing, I'll be able to help so many people, you know, this thing will happen to their life. And, you know, I can see that vision instead. Now that vision inspires me and money, like the challenge with money for most people, actually most people in the world is when you get past a certain state. So when you, and it's not even being rich, but it's past the state where, you don't worry about money like desperately, right. then money stops being a motivator, right? Absolutely, yes. And like, there's definitely some people where it will be a motivator their entire life, uh, but but for many people that is not the case, and it's very difficult for them to understand because they're like, oh, you know, my boss gave me this goal, and if I hit this goal, I'll get a bone, a huge bonus, but right. I have zero motivation to go hit the goal, and that is right. be typically because you are not motivated by the money, right? And right. Then, that's okay. Right. Yeah. And, and it's so important for, you know, managers and employers to recognize what people are motivated by, mm -hmm. because you can help to motivate your employees without money, with other incentives, if you understand that, but you're right. There are, I'm like you. And, and I learned this early on because I, my business was doing amazing. It was just me. And I'd had back in 2016, I had my biggest month ever. I made $80,000 in a month, just me. And I was like, I remember waking up and being like, wow, that was, that's great, but I'm still miserable. And I had to recognize why I was miserable. It wasn't the money. And I thought like, as soon as my business is doing amazing, I'm going to feel great. And I realized I had to, I had to get more connected with what lit me up, 
what I was excited about. And like you, I love to help people. That is my main thing. That is what excites me to be able to serve people, to be able to do what I do best, to be able to show up in a different way. And when I realized that and put the focus on making sure that everything I did every day was my choice. And I, I get to choose everything I do. And it's one of the reasons why I started my business, but I've forgotten about that. So I went from a secure income to having to create my income as a single mom. It was just me. And, and when you have that fear, when you don't have that security, that money's there, it's fear that drives you. And when fear drives you, you never show up the way you're supposed to. You don't make aligned choices. You're not doing things for you. You're doing things out of a reaction to the fear. And that's what we want to release. We want to remove that reaction to fear and have people show up in an aligned way because they show up so much different, whether it's in their personal life or business life or whatever it is, they show up in a totally different way. Yeah. And that's, uh, so totally when I, when I coach people, right, the, the first thing I ask them is like, how much money are you making? are you comfortable or what is the comfortable number? Because right. like as good as I am at coaching and stuff, what I've realized is if people have fear, if they have the fear of not being able to pay their bills this month, you know, you, you could coach them like crazy, but you, you will most likely not get amazing results until right. you help them basically get rid of that fear, right? Or basically make money so that fear isn't relevant anymore, right? right. And yeah. then the point you get to that stage then it becomes so much easier to work with people and it becomes so much easier to actually mold them and shape them and, you know, help them uh, develop and grow. So. Yeah, so true. So, so true. Excellent. Well, that was, uh, that was super interesting. Anything else on this topic you feel we, we should share with the audience before we finish up? No, I think that, you know, one of the things that I have seen as, as I guess a last kind of input is that more people, everyone asks me like, why the world's so crazy right now, energetically, psychic speaking. And one of the things that is happening is that people are being forced to understand who they are on that deeper level. So if people can encourage their employees, even, even do workshops or, or recommend books that their employees can connect to it in, in learn from in order to understand themselves better, in order to understand what they want in life, what they desire, who they really are, what that purpose is. Everybody has to have a purpose in life and a passion. Even if your job's not your passion, Find a project to do. Like I call them passion projects. It's where it, it's, you're so excited every day to work on it. You're so excited to show up and you're so excited to share that. But we are being forced to connect with ourselves on a deeper level. The more we resist it, the harder life is going to be. So whether you're, you're holding workshops for your employees to connect to themselves, figure out what drives them, what they're passionate about, or, or whether you're giving books or, or what it is, whether you're, you own a business, this is so important right now. This is, you know, our truth in our, in our personal understanding and standing in our power and being who we're supposed to be is the highlight in the forefront of what is going on personally and energetically within people. So that is a focus that people should be focusing on. It's not so much the outside world. We're all focused on everything outside of ourselves. And we have been for years, immediate gratification. Where can I go next? What can I do? Instead, we need to put a mirror in front of us and look down deep in order to continue to move forward and create that success and that passion in life. Totally. I totally agree. Excellent. So um, if people are eager to get hold of you, Carrie, what's the best way of doing so? So I'm on Facebook and Instagram and my website. All of it is Carrie Cardozo. So it's super easy to remember. So just CarrieCardozo.com and on all social media on LinkedIn, just Carrie Cardozo. Perfect. That sounds straightforward. Thank you very much for joining me today, Carrie. Thanks for having me. I love having conversations with people and getting to meet new people. So. Excellent. And to the audience, thank you very much for tuning in again. It's a pleasure to have you listen, and we'll be back again next week. Thank you for listening to the Mad Singers Management Podcast. Please leave a review. It means the world to us. You can also learn more about management at madsingers.com.